Yes, you guys might have seen this type of motion graphics in the latest trailer of the RTX 50 series. I hope they see this video and send me a free unit. So as please comment hashtag GeForce RTX 50. So let's see how you can do it. To start with, we have this object in our scene. Again, the next thing that we are going to do is add a plane in our scene. Now I have to scale it by 30 meters. I mean, make it 30 meters by 30 meters. So I can press N on my keyboard and here it will give me the dimension. I will change it to 30 and it will make it 30 meters. That is the platform that will have the effect. Now before we go ahead and apply any of the effects on the plane, let's just go ahead and animate our object first. First my logo will be in air, something like that. I'll press I and insert a keyframe. Then I'll go to the 20th frame, I will bring it down almost touching the ground like that insert a keyframe again by pressing the i key then it will stay there for a little bit like 10 to 20 frames or whatever you would like i will keep it for 20 frames and then give it a little bit of rotation as well and insert keyframe again then you can go ahead in the timeline at the 340th frame i set the end to 348th and then move it like that and insert a keyframe again now we have registered all the keyframes right here so it's supposed to be looking something like that now we can move to the step two we will have to simulate this plane so that would be easy first of all let's go to the 20th frame where our object is touching the ground what i'm gonna do is add a uv sphere to our scene like that i'll move it towards our object we'll see from the top view now i'll scale it down as well now what we have to do here is I will click select this and select our main object press ctrl p and object and keep transform now our sphere will be animated with our object just like that I would go into the object edit mode and move it somewhere like that now go ahead and you can hide your sphere that's not an issue now selecting our plane we'll go to the modifiers and add our modifiers which is dynamic paint right now switch to this tab which is the physics tab and you will have this dynamic paint applied you could have also applied dynamic paint from here that but that's not necessary make sure it's set to canvas and click on add canvas now the second thing that you have to do is selecting the sphere and also apply a dynamic paint on this and change this to brush our sphere will be the brush and our plane will be the canvas and add the brush now you can hide your sphere again that's not required now before we can simulate it we need some geometry on this so right click and subdivide it quite a few times so we have enough geometry for it to be simulated also apply the scale on it now the first thing that you have to do is check the anti-aliasing and also surface type change it to waves now select the collection which contains your brush and now we should see something going on as you can see something is happening but we have to refine our result also right click shade it smooth so it looks more smoother at the start it was good i really liked it but no that's not the final result i want okay for the settings first i will set the time scale and speed to 0 0.4 then the damping which will make our liquid more thicker i'll set it to 0 0.1 spring can be set to 1 and the smoothness is will be 1 also make sure to change the sub steps to about five for now as much as your pc can handle and let's see it again and now that is the result that i have been wanting the liquid is more thicker nah. also make sure you have open borders so that the waves doesn't come back they just go away by open borders but the difference you will see is the waves will pass through the borders the next step would be like converting this mesh into those nice straight or maybe gay lines we can go ahead to the modifiers and add a geometry node modify and click on new now let's just divide this panel right here and switch this to geometry node editor and we are here now the first thing that we have to do is delete geo node we are going to do some math i mean it's just four to five step if you want to just copy paste you can just copy paste those things use a node which is edge vertices just drag it out and type subtract vector math and then connect the sub position 2 as well of the vertices now that we have this let's again drag this out and connect a normalize node with that we'll connect a 
absolute and lastly oh, not lastly of course and connect a uh, equal and change it to the direction and direction would be this one set it to one and lastly connect this to not so we will tell them not to delete these ones and connect it right here and nothing is happening set the angle to zero for now wait why is it not working oh my god okay i forgot change it to the edges now we got to see something boy oh my boy i'm good but we have one issues edge is edging which is edge simulating you can see those are disappearing as well so we can change around this epsilon setting so we can get those edges back so we can edge we have to increase it a bit further i will set it oh that's 0 0.8 i think that should be good enough it is getting really really heavy let's try changing the angle a bit that should help with the problem yeah let us solve the problem so if you want to increase these number of lines um what you can do is going to edit mode scale it on the x-axis like that after that you can use a uh, x extrude mesh node to extrude them and uh, not individual of course use a vector connect it to the offset let's do it to the z i guess no oh wait change it to edge of course because we have to edge it move it down like that so they are no this is really irritating me uh what you can do is quickly let's add some light to a scene and then you can select all this light and then select this and then parent it as it we did to the sphere and the lights will follow our mesh so what we can do is just quickly set material for it quickly let's change the material uh, let's create a new material and then set the material name to lines and set lines here get a little bit darker now next thing that is if you want to like give it more simulation you can add another modifier which will be a wave modifier i'll just keep it after the geo nodes and make sure to select yes yeah, start position so i'll select our object with this eyedropper and that is the anvil link object and now we have those waves but those waves are so huge i'll set it to 0.05 for the height and that should do for me okay then to add more spices to our simulation what you can do is use a set position node then we will need to extract the uh, nearest location of our object which is the enemy link the main object then we can use a proximity geometry proximity and then using the distance from this we can connect it to our offset but for that first you'll need to add some more noises you can utilize the location of the and the proximity of our object and multiply it with some noise texture and check them so what i'm gonna do is set the s to 0 0.6 and change the 40 because you want it to animate as well so i'll tap hashtag frame divided by 24 let's see what our object is currently looking like the distance oh i forgot to set it to relative yeah and now we have all those distance so what we can do is use a map range so to increase the range of our object like that also set it to smoother step yep that looks even great you can have some proximity like this then what we can do is use a mix color node to multiply it with some noise texture like that as you can see there's some noise going on and now finally we can connect this to the offset and let's see what kind of result does it give to us i'll just delete this and we have some really good noise going on now it's time to finish this off to get that color spreading out from our object like it's painting some so we'll head back to where we did our dynamic paint thing and create another one now make sure this one is set to paint only because we want it to be painted now we can have sub step to one and that should be good enough now make sure to check dissolve on and dry on next effect that we would want is spread effect and this is good enough for it now we have to change this vertex to image sequence and make sure to also select the 
collection which has the brush so first for now we'll just turn off the geo nodes and the waves simulation so we can finish it fast fast or it would become heavy so let's head back and change the dissolve to 60 for now and make the dry half of the dissolve which will be 30 and that should do for us set it to uv map and we are good to go now we can bake image sequence after the bake image sequence is done we gotta shift to the shader editor and we have our original material here so what we gotta do is now is we have to bring in the image texture to import all that data all that image sequence we have to just click on this open but we don't know the directory so what we can do is go to here in our where we have picked the image sequence we have already created a path click on this folder and we can just copy this path and go back here click open enter that path and then select the first one and open image and it will import the sequence click it on auto refresh if you make any changes like if you have to change around with something that you want frame c set to one that is not good we have to set it to the exact number of frame we did which is 340 we'll set it to 340 we can just copy paste it and that would be good just directly have a view then use a diffuse node diffuse bsdf control shift right click drag to the principal bsdf we'll get a mix shader and then connect it right here and the factor controlling the where we will have diffuse and we will have the principal bsdf is this image sequence i will change this diffuse bsdf to a green color and i think i have to switch around with this yeah and now if we play it you will get something like this well this is lasting but not as much can increase the time here we can change the time to around 80 and this one dry is 30 enough can again bake the image sequence and it will auto update right here now we can make it look even more better using a color ram we can drag it right here and we can just drag the white slider to the left and get more of that green result you can switch to cardinal or whatever you would like to be well linear is the best for it now that we got that result we can turn back our geometry nodes on which will give us those lines but wait the texture is not appearing here so that is because we have to connect a texture coordinate here if we connect the generated to the vector we'll get that thing here and now we have our really really good result now what you just have to do is just get a render done out of it and you are done so thanks for watching this really beautiful tutorial made by me and if you really like this tutorial really liked what i made today please do make sure to subscribe and give all your money thanks for watching and see you in the next one